Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch President, with our special weekly update here on Facebook Live. A busy week uh, here in Washington, D.C., and at Judicial Watch particularly, with many revelations on Benghazi, the insider threat from Hillary Clinton. Of course, we had the outrageous activities against President Trump from within his own administration that results in the leaking of classified information in a way that is really dangerous to our nation's security. And then we had our great voter fraud uh, panel yesterday. I hope you tuned into that. And then there is even more news about court orders forcing out more information, potentially, about Clinton pay-for-play scandals. So as the rest of Washington is involved in uh, chasing rumors and anonymous sourcing, Judicial Watch is out there getting the documents from the government that, rely, that allow you to analyze the records and figure out what's going on. But lots of things going on. Um, let's talk about Benghazi first, because we have these documents that we released this year that show that on the day after the attack, you had top officials in Hillary Clinton and Obama's administration, State Department, briefing members of Congress staff on the attack. And it's clear from the transcript and the report of the call, they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, that it was not a Internet video causing a spontaneous protest that led to the death of the ambassador. And I encourage you to go on our website at judicialwatch.org, or if you're not, subscribe to our regular emails so that you get this information directly. But go and read these documents, because I can only give you a gist of it here on Facebook Live. Uh, but uh, Mr. Uh, uh, who is the name of the official? that I, uh, The name is escaping me. Patrick Kennedy, excuse me, Patrick Kennedy was the Under Secretary of Management who I think was uh, let go by President Trump or retired, you, you analyze that. Uh, but he was there and allowed Hillary Clinton to do all this illegal emailing and maintenance of servers. But he's also responsible for security in part at Benghazi. And he was giving a report to members of, as I said, the staff of Congress the day after the attack. And he was asked, was this attack under the cover of a protest? No, this was a direct breaching attack. A bre direct breaching attack. Do we believe coordinated with Cairo? Because you remember there were these protests in Cairo over this video, protests that were spurred on, frankly, by the administration. Attack in Cairo was a demonstration. There were no weapons shown or used, a few cans of spray paint. And the notes also detailed that the ambassador had actually gotten out of the compound, but collapsed and was taken to the hospital. And Patrick Kennedy, again, uh, the number two official at the State Department, told the member, the congressional representatives uh, that it was his personal opinion that the attack was, quote, semi-complex. So this was not a riot that got out of control. And here you know, here you have documents that you can review, produced to us by the Obama administration, that show that uh, Hillary Clinton State Department was briefing the Senate, was briefing Congress that the attack was uh, semi-complex, it wasn't tied to anything other than uh, a group, that they didn't know the name of the group, but it was a terrorist group, had claimed responsibility, and uh, there's no doubt that the administration was lying when a few days later they blamed it on an internet video through Susan Rice. And what really bugs me is I see Susan Rice is signing these declarations against President Obama's executive order trying to keep terrorists out of the country. And by the way, Susan Rice was Hillary Clinton, was President Obama's national security advisor. Now, compare and contrast that to the way Mr. Flynn has been treated, General Flynn has been treated uh, by this town. Uh, these, uh, these attacks... Uh, are outrageous in the sense that they show you had the Obama administration wiretapping the Trump transition uh, based on nothing more than the innuendo that Trump talked to Russia too much. And uh, you had the Trump transition team being wiretapped by President Obama and his people. And we now know, based on a New York Times report, if it's to be believed, that Obama, quote, advisors were in communication with law enforcement about that wiretap. And the FBI went and interviewed General Flynn earlier this month under the pretext that he had violated the Logan Act. 
Now go ahead and look up what the Logan Act is. It essentially prevents private individuals from uh, acting on their own in terms of foreign relations. They can't, <laughs> someone going to a foreign country and pretending to represent the United States or having an alternative foreign policy in a way that confuses uh, the population. As you might imagine, that's a law that's been difficult to enforce and has never really been enforced or prosecuted. So the idea that this FBI, within a month, goes to visit uh, General Flynn on the pretext of this Logan Act violation just shows you how corrupted the situation was. Now, I know Trump says that he let go of Flynn because he couldn't trust him in the sense that Flynn supposedly may have discussed a, uh, the sanctions or something related to the sanctions, and he wasn't fully, uh, didn't fully disclose that to Vice President Pence and others when he was briefed on it. I, I frankly don't believe that to be true in the sense that I guarantee you Flynn told them everything he thought they needed to know and left out some information, and that's far different than lying to someone. And I still want to know who had access to this transcript, this wiretap, which is inherently classified, and who released it to the media. That is more serious a crime than anything that Mr. Flynn did. Let's assume Mr. Flynn lied, General Flynn lied. Let's assume he lied to the vice president. That would be wrong. It wouldn't be a crime necessarily, but it would be wrong. And I wouldn't blame the, pres the president for letting him go if that were indeed the case. All big ifs. But there's no doubt that the violations of law through these leaks are serious and call into question whether our national security apparatus is being targeted at the Trump administration in an illegal way. The Wall Street Journal had a piece earlier this week suggesting there were intelligence officials who were withholding information from the president because they didn't like him. You know, that to me smacks of sedition. So there's a crisis and chaos cause. It's caused by the... Uh, really unhinged opposition to President Trump within his own administration, within the Obama administration, the holdovers who, uh, or former officials who are illegally talking to the media. Uh, so there are a lot of crimes involved here. I doubt they have anything to do with General Flynn and everything to do with the crazed opposition to President Trump. And Judicial Watch, we have plenty of Freedom of Information Act requests pending on this, and you can bet we're going to sue if we don't get the answers we are uh, entitled to under law. And some of these cases may come up as soon as next week. So stay tuned on that. Forgive me for going off a little bit on that, but it's a serious issue. Um, you know, I talked about Benghazi. That's what they don't want to talk about. And this is also what they don't want to talk about. We got a defense PowerPoint presentation depicting former Secretary Clinton as an example of an insider threat. So they're presenting a site. So this this was uh, presented at um, at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, and uh, it was part of an Operation Security lecture delivered to soldiers there. And we first got uh, word of it because someone who was getting the briefing said, "Oh my gosh, Hillary Clinton and inside a threat." And they took a picture of I think part of the program, and it ended up on Facebook, and there's got some coverage. So we said, "Let's get the full picture. Let's get the full PowerPoint and briefing." And sure enough. Uh, it depicts Hillary Clinton as an insider threat, along with uh, Major Hassan, the terrorist, uh, Chelsea Manning, or Bradley Manning, depending on um, what time of day it is, uh, Snowden, uh, and uh, General Betraeus. And uh, they were, quote, careless or disgruntled employees. And they said, uh, the PowerPoint says that, uh, uh, and it ties it to the... Uh, critical information compromises, including material such as, as the itineraries of senior executive service and VIPs, which can result in attack, kidnapping, or publicity, or even death. Well, we know that was happening with Hillary Clinton's emails. She and her colleagues and her staff were using this unsecure account to discuss all sorts of really secure travel information. And I remember reading that material and thinking, you know, Hillary Clinton, despite everything, all the criticism, is that she was putting herself at risk and her colleagues at risk by using this system. And it's for the grace of God that nothing terrible happened as a result of these disclosures in terms of uh, death, dismemberment, or, or uh, something like that. 
Uh, and sure enough, this, this program, this PowerPoint presentation, highlights it. And I print it out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this is the PowerPoint slide. Yeah, yeah, there's my colleague is telling me we got it. So there you've got Snowden, Manning, Hassan, Petraeus, and Clinton. Now, Petraeus there is interesting, and I think it, I hopefully, I see it, General uh, President Trump is considering General Petraeus to uh, be the national security advisor, or at least he's on the list of those mentioned. I think that would be a mistake. Uh, his, his misconduct was serious. Uh, he's lucky he got away with as light as a criminal sanction as he did, and I don't think he should be rewarded uh, with the national security post after what he did. I'm sure he's doing fine for himself in the private sector, but um, I, I just don't want to, I don't think the American public should be asked to trust him again, uh, given his previous violations of law. Uh, so, and I hope President Trump understands that. Uh, next, final point. Federal court issues opinion ordering release of more Clinton Foundation conflict of interest documents. Unbelievable. So they were giving us materials about her conflicts of interest at the State Department. They were supposed to be carefully vetting them. But then they started redacting key parts of them. And one of the judges, a Judge Contreras here in the District of Columbia, decided that was not appropriate. And he looked at what was being, um, uh, he, he looked at the, the legal issues. We raised issues with him. And he said, Judicial Watch is right. Some of this stuff is purely factual. The, you know, they want to get back to, this is the typical government response. Well, anything we disclose will, will uh, chill internal government deliberations. And the court's response is, okay, we're not asking for the discussion. We just want to know what you were discussing generally. So the facts about what the conflict was, who was she meeting with? What was the deal that was being proposed? What was the deal that was being analyzed? That's not what being, should be withheld. So um, he said that the order, those materials be disclosed to us. So it's going to be very interesting to see what it is the Obama State Department didn't want you to see about the conflicts of interest issues that were coming up with Hillary Clinton. And, you know, all of this reminds me, you name it, Benghazi, uh, the insider threat, these new records, and frankly, the attack on the Trump administration by those who want to see him destroyed and they're willing to violate the law and do sorts of all, all sorts of other things to do it, it in many ways is about Hillary Clinton. I mean, compare and contrast the FBI visiting General Flynn within a month to investigate the Logan Act, which is obviously an excuse, not a reason to interview him. Well, Hillary Clinton's, there were disclosures about her mishandling of classified information of the most sensitive nature. And it took the FBI almost a year to get around to interviewing her. And we all know how haphazard and, ham and, and how uh, half-baked that interview was. And it only occurred after the president, Bill Clinton, met with the attorney general on that, uh, infamous, uh, at that infamous tarmac meeting in uh, Arizona. So compare and contrast the way that Flynn's been treated. And compare and contrast the, the leaks of classified material. And the fact that the Obama administration was surveilling President Trump and his team on flimsy ground with the get-out-of-jail-free card that the same Justice Department issued to Hillary Clinton. And uh, there's a scandal with this Trump-Russia thing. There is. It's not what the media is telling you it is. And I think, uh, you know, General Flynn is a, uh, a, a, uh, a victim here. And uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Trump is a real target in a way uh, that is just disturbing to our Republican form of government. When we have government officials either withholding information from the president they're obligated to provide to him, arguably, or revealing and leaking classified material, highly sensitive material, in a way to uh, really mislead the American people about what's going on. Uh, so... Uh, this is serious stuff. Judicial Watch is investigating it all. We're going to keep on on this. We've got lawsuits we're probably going to end up having to file. And, uh, and just before I go, if you haven't watched our voter fraud presentation from yesterday, please do. It's, it's up here on Facebook. You can get it on YouTube and elsewhere. 
We also have clips if you don't want to watch the whole thing. But it, the whole thing's worth watching. We've got five of the best experts, and I'm, I dare to include myself there, on election integrity here in the United States. And it's just great stuff. And I learned things from that panel. So I would encourage you to listen to it and watch it and share it widely uh, because there is a voter fraud crisis here in the United States. The big media, because they hate Trump, don't want to acknowledge it because they think Trump agrees with that. So anything Trump believes in, the big media is always going to try to disp dispel. Uh, but the truth is uh, there, and uh, we report it for you exclusively on this panel, uh, including uh, an important study that shows how many aliens are actually voting in elections in violation of the law. So uh, all of this is out there this week. So we've got these major revelations on Clinton and Benghazi, and on top of that, we're on top of uh, the anti-Trump uh, lawlessness uh, that the administration, his own administration, is pursuing against him with the help of Obama administration holdover and former employees. So this is pretty serious stuff, uh, but Judicial Watch is doing its best to watch it all on behalf of you, the American people. Thanks for joining us, and have a great week.